Okay guys, today we're going to be talking about my essentials to bushcrafting in Alaska. And what it's basically going to be talking about is breaking down some of the ideas of what gear you should look to carry if you are going to be bushcrafting and practicing wild camping in Alaska. And I've kind of spawned this idea because I have talked to certain people and I've well, I've talked to people and they're like, you know, can I use a machete? Can I use this type of tool? And their conception and notion of bushcrafting in Alaska is just a little bit off. You know, the heart is in the right place, but without, you know, understanding what bushcraft is or without really knowing, you know, what we do, uh, it can be hard to sometimes understand what the best gear choices are for being out in the wilderness and bushcrafting. So without any further ado, we're going to take a look at some of the gear that I recommend and just some of the tool choices to make uh, the realistic uh, gear that you're gonna be carrying when doing bushcrafting tasks out in the field. So without any further ado, uh, please don't forget to comment, like, share, and subscribe to see more, com more content like this. Okay, so by and large, when it comes to bushcrafting in Alaska, it's not terribly different than bushcrafting in just about any type of forested area. The primary difference uh, with bushcrafting in Alaska is, like I said, your tool choices and what you want to prioritize for harvesting the materials around you in Alaska. And whether you're in central Alaska like myself or you're in southern Alaska like many of my other YouTubing friends, uh, there's still not a whole lot of resources that can be easily gathered and gained through smaller tools. So you'll see a lot of this tool set is uh, primarily, you know, axes, hatchets, and saws because that's the best way to harvest the stuff around us. We're dealing with a lot of, you know, larger trees and not gigantic trees like redwoods, but we're dealing with generalized, you know, trees that are about anywhere from three to six or seven inches in diameter. So, you know, these are not things that you'll be using machetes on or types of kukris and, you know, you won't be able to effectively harvest the materials around you to build things with those tools. So starting off the uh, first tool, Starting off with the first tool, it is going to be a small knife, something like this Bark River Knives Bushcrafter or something like the LT Wright Legome. These are going to be the types of tools that are going to be a mainstay for knives. And once again, the primary philosophy and the reason why you choose a smaller knife like this um, is because the knife or how you're going to be utilizing the knife in bushcrafting is going to be general camp chores. You might be doing some batoning with it and this can certainly handle that, but primarily you're going to be doing things like feather sticking, meal prep, uh, you know, light material or resource gathering, things like mushrooms or funguses, you know, is going to be gathered with knives. So this really is more of a food processor slash, you know, light camp tasks. You might be doing some notching with this, but once again, when it comes to notching, if you're building large structures and using notches as structural pieces, you know, you're going to be talking about wood or, you know, using, making notches on wood that is, you know, to inches in diameter and up and at that point when you're making notches on large pieces of wood you're just going to be using a saw so having a large knife like this or having a large knife not like this is really uh, not important so you want to have a small knife that can be easily carried and can do those smaller tasks effectively and meaningfully okay Okay, so the next tool we're going to be talking about is hatchets and axes. So I'm going to leave the axe in here just because it's a pain in the butt to get in and out. But hatchets and axes uh, are really going to be the absolute workhorse of your bushcrafting uh, tools. And this is why these are the most essential tool for bushcrafting in Alaska. And I've talked about this before in another video where I said, you know, don't spend the money on super high quality knives and, you know, get something like a... Uh, more a bushcraft black, you know, at first get really good hatchets, axes, and saws, and then get better knives. And the reason why that is, is especially here in Alaska, like I said, a lot of the resource gathering is going to be from larger pieces of wood. So whether you're splitting that wood to make, uh, you know, firewood, or whether you're harvesting wood to make, you know, 
the structural components for shelters, fire reflectors, anything like that. It's all going to be done with hatchets, axes, and saws. So uh, having a good solid hatchet, something like a GBA wildlife hatchet or something like a Holtzbrook all mic is going to be very important and very useful and it's going to serve you rather well because you're going to be able to go out and, you know, uh, get the materials that you need to build different projects that will come up and be necessities uh, when you bushcraft here. In addition to that, uh, hatchets are very good for the same type of material and resource gathering that a small knife can do. So this hatchet here is going to be able to secure and get uh, a lot of those different um, funguses and, you know, those funguses like chaga and others. So the hatchet is super important and I definitely make sure that whether it's winter, summer, all season, I'm using a hatchet. Now, like I said, the ax is gonna stay in here, but basically the same purpose is to be served with the ax. The ax is a little bit more industrial, it's a little bit larger, and you're gonna use it for larger projects, but the ax is another mainstay, and I feel like maybe I don't talk about the ax enough on this channel, or stress the importance of having a good ax, and in the summer in Alaska, you can get away without using an ax, especially if you already have a built-up structure. So like if I was going to one of my shelter locations where I already had fire reflectors, already had an established fire site, already had an established shelter or cover, you know, I probably wouldn't bring the ax. But especially when you're setting those things up, when you're felling the large trees to get that get to that point, having the axe is going to be very important. Now, one thing I will say, uh, you know, I have stressed that we have a lot of larger materials here, and that's the primary materials for building, but our materials here in Alaska, because of Alaska being so harsh and desolate, um, our trees do not grow as large as things like redwood, so you don't necessarily need a gigantic axe. I have effectively used things like the wild, or <laughs> like the wetterlings, uh, Swedish forest axe, things like the GBA Scandi forest axe, and other 28 inch handled to 25 inch handled axes. And though that is a smaller boy's axe uh, size, that is definitely effective for most bushcrafting uh, material acquisitions or gathering most materials for bushcraft because the primary wood that you're going to be focusing on when it comes down to bushcrafting whether it's building or firewood gathering is going to be you know approximately anywhere from two inches in diameter to about eight inches in diameter and that's the largest stuff i've ever really gathered and at eight inches unless you're building something very solid like a cabin you're not really going to want to go past that because because that weight of an eight inch diameter piece of wood, whether it's wet or dry, is pretty hefty. So if you're using that as a structural beam in a shelter, you have to then conversely find a way to secure that eight inch diameter beam so that it does not come crashing down and hurt you or hurt anything or damage equipment. So you, know, you really don't wanna go past that uh, diameter. So the next thing is a saw, and this is probably not the best example, but this honestly really works for the majority of the time, because a lot of times, especially in the winter, you're probably gonna be using more of an ax to do most of your like felling and bucking of trees, but the saw, especially in the summer, is a super handy tool, and it does, it gets the job done very well, very efficiently, and even a smaller saw like this Gomboy is wicked fast, and once again, very, very effective. So. Using a saw like this is definitely solid and uh, you know having a saw is an essential in my opinion for proper bushcrafting in Alaska because once again the materials here are not so easily gathered in really any other way so once you do drop a tree you know with an axe uh, it's nice to you know limb it with a hatchet and buck it with a saw probably a little bit bigger of a saw than this but using a saw to buck trees down is very important. So those are the basic tool set essentials that I would consider for Alaska. You know, these are gonna be the tools that you're going to be relying on for getting a large portion of your materials and you're going to be using in your day-to-day -day life. Like every day, you're gonna wake up and use these tools specifically. So that's why it's so important to uh, stress to make sure that you have high quality, you know, axes, hatchets, and saws. And then, you know, when you can, 
make sure you get you know, a higher quality knife. Once again, it's not pivotal, but you want to try to aim for having high quality in all of these tools, if nothing else, for the reason that it really improves your quality of life when you're out in the wilderness. You know, not having to stop and sharpen tools as frequently, not having to deal with rust as frequently, and not having to, you know, deal with poten potential breakages of the tools. So next thing is, uh, once again, kind of going back to quality of life, and I've mentioned this in videos before, but other things that you want to factor, things that aren't necessarily related to bushcrafting, I still think survival and bushcraft go hand in hand, and you should always think about your survival and, you know, making sure that you're staying safe whenever you're bushcrafting, because while the objective is to go out into bushcraft, or while the bushcraft objective is to go out and camp in the wilderness, be self-sufficient, you want to make sure that if anything does go wrong, that you have the proper equipment to keep yourself safe. So things like a personal survival kit, things like a personal locator beacon are things that I stress. In addition to this, other things that I like are GPS units for navigation. And I like GPS units for a couple reasons. One, they obviously help keep you safe because they give you a hard line point where you know where you're at. You understand you know how far you are from you know whatever point of civilization um, you know they are very helpful in those regards but also I like to use some GPS's for scouting so if I'm still searching or if I'm searching for a new bushcrafting campsite to set up at I can scout an area very light you know with very little gear go out find spots you know put waypoints on them and on my GPS and then once I found solid places that work for me in bushcrafting, I can then go back with you know my whole loadout and actually make a bushcrafting campsite to return to. So I really like having a GPS for that reason. Like I said, there's also the safety reason, but making sure you have a personal survival kit too is very important. And I do have a video covering this specific personal survival kit, but the objective is just to make sure that you have the proper equipment on you so that if you have to spend more time out without the level of comfort that you were anticipating, you could at least make it out alive or you know make it with a little more comfort because psychological, um, Psychological problems definitely can affect your ability and your, you know, your ability to function in the wilderness. So, yeah. So that's basically the essentials to bushcrafting for me and the tool set that you should focus on. And hopefully this has helped you guys out if you're thinking about bushcrafting in Alaska or if, even if you're thinking of bushcrafting in places like Canada or Russia. This is really a general kind of guidelines to how to survive or how to wild camp in the boreal forest because... Russia and Canada definitely have similar climates, similar, you know, materials, resources to Alaska, but uh, of course Alaska is just a little bit different. So anyways, guys, hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Like I said, please don't forget to comment, like, share, and subscribe. Ring the notification bell. It helps me out a ton, and I very much appreciate it. And as always, God bless, and I'm out.